Hey everyone, I'm Jeannie. This is I Dream of Jeannie Design. And today, I'm gonna take you step by step through a new custom order that just came into my shop today. We're going to learn how to prep and paint a dining room table. Let's get started. All right guys, let's go over the materials needed so that we can start on prepping this dining room table. All right, first off, with this dining room table, it has a little bit of a worn finish, and so some of the old veneer is kind of popping off, and I'm going to go ahead and start with sanding it, and I'm going to use my palm sander today. Next, it is a very important step because prep is the essential step for creating custom, beautiful, professional-looking painted pieces. And I'm going to start with a deglosser today. I use a deglosser and a Brillo pad, a little bit of water, and then I rinse it clean again with a clean sponge and water, and then it's clean and ready to go. So let's get started. Okay guys, it's time to start talking about prepping the table, and that's step one. And step one today is going to be me sanding the old finish on the table. Now, when I say sanding, I'm not talking about sanding the entire finish off. It's just kind of sanding and getting all of the old dirt and grime and years of buildup off. But also, I kind of wanted to point out something that's happening on this table and maybe happening on yours and how to address it. So if you can kind of zoom in here and you can see, a little bit of the, the um, original finish is kind of flaking off in areas and it's kind of a rough feel. So what I'm going to do is just sand a little bit more in those areas. So I'm going to get started on that and then we're going to clean and prep the space for paint. So let's get started. Okay guys, so I've already sanded the entire tabletop surface and I kind of ground down the areas where the finish was peeling off. So now I'm going to talk in detail in regards to how I clean and prep the surface with this deglosser. Now yes, I do recommend on a very glossy surface to use this um, deglosser detergent, but I use it on every surface so that I have that beautiful smooth finish of paint when I'm done. So again, this is called deglosser and I just use um, a little bit of water in a bucket and um, this is just a scouring pad, a scotch Brite scouring pad that I'm going to use to apply it on there. And then when I'm done, I'm going to take just a regular um, foam sponge and um, get it wet and clean that off. Now, I'm not done after that. There's just one more step to prep and dry your surface before you start painting. Um, I always, once I'm done rinsing this table and cleaning it, I spray it again with vinegar and water and wipe it dry with a paper towel because even though we've cleaned it twice with the cleaner and water, there's always just that little bit of residue left and you want to make sure that you have nothing on your surface before you paint. Remember to use some gloves when you start this and um, then you're gonna, we're going to start the next step. Okay, so let's get going. this dining room set with chalk paint and I'm going to be painting by hand. Um, one of a very important tool when chalk painting I believe is in your brushes so using quality products quality brushes creates quality finish and I only paint uh, chalk paint with chalk paint brushes and these are natural bristle brushes and they're kind of an oval round shape they have a very large head and they spread out and spread the paint very evenly and a lot um, a lot less work in a lot shorter amount of time Normally, when you use chalk paint, you don't have to sand to prep, but remember, we had to sand this tabletop because of the broken up finish, And um, but you do always need to clean. Now I have this beautiful, soft, um, and cleaned prepped surface, and I'm just going to start painting, okay? I have a large quantity of my black chalk paint, and I'm going to get going. So, since I'm not using, no primer is needed, 
for chalk paint. Uh, chalk paint itself is its own primer. It uh, adheres to almost any surface and it acts as a primer on its own. So I can just paint straight on my furniture with the chalk paint to receive the coverage that I want. Chalk paint is a matte coverage and um, it's low odor, zero VOCs. It's a water-based product with a chalk additive in it. So you could even paint indoors with this paint without the problem of um, the odors lingering in your home. Now when I paint a tabletop or the top of any surface, I am always very careful to make sure that I feather my paint. And what I mean by that is that I use long strokes when I apply the paint and a thin first coat because you can always add more. Thin is best when painting with chalk paint. Um, and it's easy to distress when you're finished, but I don't want a bunch of little tiny choppy strokes in my paint and on my finish so that I have that beautiful smooth finish as I'm painting. So I'm gonna continue painting with this chalk paint and speed this process up a little bit. And I'm gonna get my first coat on the tabletop and then I'm gonna go ahead and start on the skirt and the legs. All right, here we go. So I've finished painting my table and I have two coats of chalk paint on it. So we have a full coverage at the moment. The next step that I wanna do is teach you a little bit about how to distress and kind of get that aged and worn look as well as how to create that buttery smooth finish. So chalk paint is a full matte coverage. And what I mean by matte is that it is um, a very flat, a flat finish but it also has a little bit of a chalky um, or rough feel to it but the best part about painting with chalk paint is you can create a butter smooth finish with a, just a few simple steps and I always create that actually by sanding so I'm going to use my palm sander and the finest grit that I could find which was 220 and I'm going to sand this entire tabletop just to knock off that rough feeling of the chalkiness on the tabletop. So let's get started. Okay, I have my palm sander and my fine sanding grit, and I'm just gonna smoothly go back and forth to smooth this chalky surface. Okay, now I want to talk about how to create that distressed edge look. Um, we want a mostly solid surface here, but we want a little bit of distressing on the edges and to bring out great detail. So what I do is I go over all of the edges first to create um, that furniture edge look. And then sometimes I hold my um, sander on it and just kind of go a little bit heavier in certain areas where I want a little bit of like natural aging or distressing. So we're going to start that now. Okay, so now I've sanded the entire tabletop, guys, and what I want to talk about now is um, just for that smooth finish, and it feels so soft. Trust me, when you sand chalk paint, and it knocks that little grainy bit off the top, you have this beautiful butter smooth finish. But what I love about distressing with chalk paint, especially on a table or any piece of um, older furniture, all of the detail that will just pop out by us distressing and kind of running our sandpaper or our sander over and kind of bringing out some of those edges and details. So that's what I'm gonna do on these legs and on this table skirt to just add a little bit of dimension. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, see this detail that's already just starting to pop out and I'm just beginning. So I think that that is really making this table look really fantastic. And um, that's how I create this weathered look on furniture. So I'm gonna continue working on this and then we're gonna talk about sealing and protecting our painted furniture next. Okay, so now I have sanded and distressed my table and we're gonna talk about sealing it for protection and longevity. Um, and as you can see, my table's not quite black, it's a little gray right now. And a lot of times people may get freaked out when they're using a dark color of chalk paint and then all of a sudden this kind of grayish color comes up. But don't worry, it's part of the process. That is just, remember chalk paint is made with a chalk substance. So that's kind of just that chalky substance coming up, but I promise you that it's going to go right back to a deep, beautiful color as we seal this. So you can seal chalk paint with wax or um, a water-based poly, a poly product. So I'm gonna use a water-based polyurethane today. And the customer for this particular project requested a satin finish. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to seal your tabletop and how that rich color comes right back. And what I use is a foam brush. And now I use a poly brush purchased from um, the hardware store. You don't really wanna use a craft foam brush for this because you want a really strong, thick uh, foam. Um, on your brush so that it doesn't bust and it goes very far. And we're just gonna kind of paint it on just like we did with the paint. This um, water-based poly also dries very, very fast um, and is very low odor. I really like this product, but you can use um, many different types of sealants. And again, I'm gonna feather what I'm doing. I'm gonna feather the poly on because I don't want teeny tiny brush strokes. And see how already that deep black color is coming back on my table. And normally I like to put at least two coats of a poly on um, a tabletop so that um, it really has very good longevity and protection. And also using a foam brush, you're not gonna get those brush marks or the rough feeling from a paintbrush. See how beautiful that's already turning out? Oops, I dripped a little. I'm gonna go ahead and finish polying this entire table. And then we're gonna talk a little bit about painting the chairs. And then I'm gonna show you a finished, beautiful dining room table. Okay, now we're gonna talk a little bit about chairs and painting and prepping chairs. So these chairs don't necessarily have a really shiny finish, so I don't absolutely need to use a deglosser or need to sand them because you don't need to do any of those things before you use chalk paint, but you always want a clean surface to paint. So I went ahead and um, sprayed vinegar and water and wiped these chairs down really, really good before um, to get this ready to go. I'm gonna set that over here. All right. And now we're gonna talk about painting. It's the same concepts as you do for a table, but this has so many different details and grooves in these chairs. Um, I do believe they're gonna need also two coats, but let's just get started and start painting and see how we do. All right, so I'm just gonna start painting. Now, when you're trying to get into tiny areas, like all of these details inside of a chair, you're gonna kinda have to push the paint in there and that's what I do, and that's why I love a round or an oval type chalk paint brush because it's not a flat sash and you have a lot more control and spreadability with these. You can cover a lot more ground in a less time. So I'm gonna go ahead, finish painting these chairs, and there's a lot of them, and then I'm gonna do the same type of distressing on the details, just like I did on the table to bring out all of these beautiful carvings. Now remember, after you sand, before you seal, make sure that you clean it always of all debris again. And we're going to be, I guess I have a helper here today. My, my puppy decided he wanted to help in the video. Um, we are gonna uh, 
probably use a wax finish for all of the chairs to kind of buff them again and give them that soft buttery feel for sealant. So I'm going to continue painting and then we're going to come back and talk about sealant. Okay, so we have completed this custom order dining room set. Now again, the customer here did not have me do any upholstery, so as you see the chairs, they are empty. But we painted this entire set with just chalk paint, and um, we finished it with a polyurethane, a water-based polyurethane to seal it. It's very easy to update and transform your furniture, and I hope that this is very helpful to you. If you like it, please let me know in the comments or hit like. If you would like to see more videos, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.